Hello, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I go about replacing a pressure sensor in a Glowworm energy boiler. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you some information about that important eco setting on the front of your boiler. I'm gonna quickly whiz through my intro then get straight on with the video. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you wanna receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. So here we are then, this is the F75 fault and this fault is on the Glowworm Energy C30. Now I ain't going to change this pressure sensor because it's no longer reading the correct pressure. And you can see on the display here, it's just about to change, there we go, to F75. And that's because the pressure sensor has become sticky and it's no longer reading that pressure change when the pump runs. And also it's reading the incorrect pressure. So when I drop the boiler down to zero pressure, it's still gonna read 1.5 bar. And as this is also a boiler protection device, we don't really want your boiler running without the protection devices running correctly also. Now the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is to drop the pressure on the boiler. I need to drop it down to zero so that when I remove the pressure sensor, I'm not gonna get water pouring out. And that can be done from this little device here, which is a drain off point. I've got my water vacuum, I'm gonna put it underneath the boiler and I'm gonna open that up and you'll see a sudden gush of water and I'm gonna catch that in my water vacuum. That water will keep coming out until the pressure has completely dropped on the boiler. Now there's no point in looking at the pressure gauge on the boiler because it's obviously not reading the correct pressure. So I just have to wait until it stopped coming out. And there we go, it stopped coming out now. I'm gonna close that back up again. Let's take a closer look at this drain off device. So it's a little device and it's got sort of two sort of handles on the sides and you twist it and it when you twist it, obviously that opens the valve and then water starts coming out. It kind of clicks and locks into position when you turn it back again, but these can become stiff and they don't always work the way they should do. So sometimes I will find another way to drain the system down. One of my favorite ways is to use the magnetic filter. This is a really easy way to drain the system or the boiler down. It does depend on the method I would use depending on what filter is fitted. And of course, sometimes there isn't a filter fitted at all. Now, depending on where the boiler is installed, I may consider closing both the central heating valves. That would be the flow and the return valves. Because if I have radiators or pipework above the boiler, when I remove the sensor, I might get a sudden gush of water pouring out of the little hole where the sensor goes in. And I don't really want water pouring out all over the boiler and the kitchen side. Because if that water goes onto any of the electrics, that could give us more problems. And I don't want more problems. Now I'm gonna remove the front cover on the boiler and I need that little star piece. And sometimes I use a flat screwdriver, which will just fit in there. A quick word of warning, when I remove this cover, I will have access to all the controls, but also the gas valve and the combustion area. And removing the cover will affect how the boiler operates. So legally, only gas registered engineers should be removing this cover to get access to the internal parts of the boiler. Now just over here on the left hand side of the boiler is the pressure sensor. Now this is a little device that's causing all the problems. You can see we have the wire here which is plugged into the sensor which takes all the readings back to the circuit board on the boiler. Now here I have a brand new pressure sensor. At the end here you can see there is a small hole and that's where the water goes in and out and then it pushes it against a small diaphragm which is inside the pressure sensor and that goes backwards and forwards which in turn pushes against the sensor which is then connected onto the circuit board. There's a small o-ring which goes onto the end of the sensor and I always grease that up. I use silicon grease and just give that a good covering like that. Then I just slip it onto the sensor like this. And there we go. That's then all ready to go and be plugged in. I'll then put that to one side so it's all ready to be plugged in when I remove the old pressure sensor. And there we go. That's got a nice covering of silicon grease. 
Now we're going to take a small screwdriver and just give that little plug a little lever because there's a little clip on the side there which holds that little plug on and then that enables me just to unplug that nice and easily. I'll then take a pair of long nose pliers so I can get to the clip which holds in the pressure sensor. Now you can see there's a pressure sensor there and you can see there's a silver little clip on the top there. And that little clip just pulls upwards. So I just got to grab that and give that a wiggle. And there you see, it just pulls off like that. Now here I have my new pressure sensor and that's ready in my hand. And I'm going to pull the other one out and then pop the other one straight back in. Because undoubtedly there will be some water coming out. Because there's always going to be some water left inside the boiler. If you watch, want to wiggle and pull the sensor out, there's a sudden spray of water. So I put the sensor straight back in again. I'm going to get my water vacuum and just put it in there underneath the sensor. And then when I pull the sensor out, it's then going to catch any water that comes out of the hole when I pull out the pressure sensor. So now just remove that pressure sensor like that. And then I'm obviously I'm just going to use the vacuum and catch any water that happens to be dripping out of that hole. I can now take my time a bit and I can get the new pressure sensor and just push that straight into the hole. After the sensor is plugged in, I can then use my vacuum just to suck up any of that water which has come out of that hole. Now I need to put the clip back in which holds the pressure sensor in. If we don't get this in properly or if the pressure sensor isn't in properly, then when we fill the boiler up, that pressure sensor is just going to burst off and send water spraying everywhere. So it's really important that I get this right. And this proved to be pretty tricky. That clip just didn't want to go in that hole. The problem is I can't actually see where I'm putting the clip. Obviously, I'm putting it where it should be and I've got to push it down into the two holes. And every time I was trying to push it into its slot, it just wouldn't go in. After four or five attempts, I decided I was going to just pull that pressure sensor out and then put it back in again. Make sure that there wasn't anything in the way. I guess maybe it wasn't fully in when I tried to do it the first time. I make sure I give it a good old wiggle as I push it in. You can see when I pull this out, a fair bit of water does come running out of the hole. And then this time when I go to put the clip in, the clip just literally slips straight into its position. I'm just going to quickly grab my water vacuum and suck up that water that came running out. There we go. So that's now all cleared up. And now you can see here is the clip and it's just sat in there ready for me to push it right down into the pressure sensor. So I'm just going to push it down my finger, give it a little wiggle as I do that. And it has to go right down to the bottom. If it doesn't go right down to the bottom, then it's not fully in. And it may leak or could even burst off maybe or damage the fitting. Now I just hold the sensor and give it a really good old tug and a wiggle to make sure that it is locked in. Because obviously I don't want it to suddenly burst off uh, where it's not been clipped in properly because that would be a bit of a disaster. Now I'm just going to press and hold the power button for five seconds. That will reset the boiler. Then it's going to come up with F73. It's just saying F73 because I've not plugged the pressure sensor in. So now I'm just going to open the front panel and I'm going to find that little lead. I'm going to plug that into the pressure sensor. There's the lead and there's the pressure sensor. Just plug that one into there like that. Making sure it goes all the way in and a little black clip clips over the top of the white plug. And there we go. That's that in there like that. And then on the display now, it's now going to read zero bar. And of course, that's what it should be doing because there's no pressure in the boiler. And the old pressure sensor, which is here, that was reading 1.5 bar with no water in the boiler at all with zero pressure. So you can see this pressure sensor is completely faulty and destined for the bin. I thought I'd just mention I have tried cleaning these pressure sensors out. So I've tried getting a small screwdriver, cleaning out any black magnetite inside the hole there, just giving the diaphragm a bit of a scrape to clean off anything. But that has kind of gotten working a tiny bit, but that's definitely not a long term fix. So like I said, once they start sticking and over reading, the only real place for them is in the bin. Now all I need to do is to just top the boiler up and check that it's all working properly. So I just need to get to these two valves under here. And it's this valve here and then this one over here which I need to open up. Now I always open this valve here first because this one is tricky to get to because it's right next to that gas valve. And then I open up all the way up like that. 
and then I'm going to go to the other valve and I'm going to open that one there up. And then when I open that one there up, I then hear some noise as the water starts going into the boiler. And then I'm going to keep an eye on my pressure gauge as I do that. Now you can hear the water going into the boiler as I open the valve. And I'm going to watch that pressure gauge and that's going to start rising up. And there we go. Like I said, that's now rising up. Now when it starts going up, the boiler will then recognize that the pressure is now good and it's going to start the pump and it's going to start pumping the water around the boiler to remove any air inside the boiler. Now this process takes some time, it'll be about 5 minutes of the pump starting and then stopping and we're going to see the pressure continuously going up and down until it's happy that there's no longer any air in the boiler and then it'll just return back to its normal standby screen and then it's all ready to go. Like I said, this does take some time, so I'm going to speed this clip up so you can see the boiler going through its startup process and you hear the pump running and then you hear the pump stop running. You should also hear the air hissing out of the automatic air vent. And then all this time, I just keep on topping the boiler up to keep the pressure at about 1.5. Whilst it's doing that, I might as well just put the cover on and replace the two screws underneath. Now it's just about coming to the end of its startup process and all the air has been removed and we'll see the screen change to its standby screen. And there we go, that's it, ready to go. I am just going to give it one final top up, take it back up to the 1.5. There we go. Once I've done that, I'm then going to close both the valves and make sure that they're both shut so the boiler doesn't continue to top itself up and then overpressurize itself. And there we are, they're now both horizontal and closed. Now all that's left to do is to check that it's working properly. So I've now turned the hot tap on, you can see the tap is flashing. And then you can also see that the flame has come on and the pressure has jumped right up to two bar now. So that's 0.5 of a bar higher than it was. That just indicates that the pressure sensor is working well, it's detecting that the pump is running and that's the way you should see the display change when you're running your central heating or your hot water. Now I'll just quickly check the central heating is running. You can now see the central heating radiator symbol is flashing in the display, indicating that the central heating is now on. And there we go, the flame's now on. Heating up the central heating. One last tip for you, if you want to know how to turn on your eco setting, that's the setting that stops the boiler from firing up all through the day and night, keeping itself warm when you're not using it. Obviously, this is inefficient and adds extra wear to your boiler. And if you want to know how to turn that setting on and off, then you can click on a link above or down in the description where I've made a video on how to turn that setting on and off. Back to this boiler, it's all working fine now. I'm just gonna write a quick note on my label there saying when the pressure sense was changed and it's always a good idea to make notes of when things are done. So now I know exactly when the pressure sensor was last changed. So that's it, that's another job done. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.